Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Now if you're new and you like talking about movies then consider hitting that subscribe button. If you've caught yourself coming back quite a few times and you haven't yet, consider hitting that subscribe button. So we have come to the end of the month and it is time to do my monthly tier list. This month surprisingly I saw 13 and I know last month I did have like a shitload of movies like way more than this because I was like up into two rows. But I honestly did not feel like I saw 13 movies like August kind of went pretty quickly but then also kind of slow but then it's like 13 movies later here we are so if you're new um if you would like like more of a take on a particular movie you can check uh, the description box down below to see if I did review it I don't uh review all the movies um especially this month because I was trying to take it a little bit easy because the whole summer's been like review 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 and your girl needed a little break so I wasn't um as there with the reviews this month so enough of this intro let's go ahead and get my eyes on and get on with this video so we are starting off with vivo which you can currently find on netflix it is a uh, sony production it is a very very cute very vibrant animated movie this is one of the few actually now that i'm looking at my stuff i did do quite a few reviews it just again felt like I didn't anywho um Bebo we're following Bebo this little monkey I don't remember what type of monkey it is who's traveling from Cuba to Miami it is a really really fun adventure it is super cute the story as a whole though is not really that cute um and then the, the music is also really good as well it's a really beautiful animated film unfortunately like all together is not like one of the best but sony does come out with some really really great animated films um like earlier in the year uh the mitchell's versus the machines which is like one of my favorite movies of 2021 which you can also find on netflix a great animation and with that comment as you can tell we do have the favorite of the year uh tier row in this video as well if you guys are new this is actually something new i just for the first time added it last month and i will only add that to your list whenever i do have one um but of course we'll get to that later and if you follow me on letterbox then you know you'll know what it is but vivo back to vivo you guys it um it was a, a good movie yes it was good i don't i don't mind re-watching it but we're gonna move on to annette which is a musical that you can find on prime video and it is also available in theaters i believe it's still available in theaters um it does have a wonderful cast with adam driver marion cotier this is a weird 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 ass musical I I don't even know there's like a weird puppet baby that we're supposed to accept as a real person let me just say it's not going to be for everybody I know this um it is very very artsy and more like again on the otter side of the spectrum so just generally it's gonna be, uh, put people off because it is a musical and then there's that weird factor but it does have great performances Adam Driver my god great i mean he's freaking adam driver he's amazing um i know this has uh, got like a lot of mixed reviews so some people love it some people hate it i absolutely loved it this is not my favorite of the year but it, i thought it was pretty awesome and uh also this i did change the wow to awesome i don't know i feel like it worked a little bit better but if you guys prefer the wow tier over awesome let me know down below moving on to coda which is actually my very first apple plus or apple tv plus whatever kind of apple <laughs> tv situation movie that i have here on my channel because i don't have apple tv um i actually got a screener for this so that's how i was able to watch it uh, but i believe you can also see it in theaters and i definitely wanted to do a review for it but i just was not feeling it on my hair i definitely just was not feeling all that great that weekend and i really don't like to film when i'm not feeling 100 because i don't want to give that type of vibe on my video so i just opted not to and i totally regret it i should have just pushed through it because i really really wanted to talk about the movie and i'm not going to linger on here too much you guys about it but i do want to talk about it because it's absolutely 
wonderful. I'm so happy that I was able to get a screener for it, but you can also check it out in theaters, I believe. I think it might still be on there. Uh, but CODA does stand for Child of a Death Adult. So we are following Ruby, who is the CODA of her family. She is the only uh, member um, of her family who can hear. Um, her family consists of her parents and her older brother. So Ruby um, is somebody who loves to sing, but obviously, does it really express it? Does it really let people hear it? Uh, hear her sing? She really is in this struggle of staying and being that daughter, being that sister, even though the brother, you know, it's like, we're gonna be able to handle this. We were able to handle it before you were born, like go and live your life. But of course she has that, she feels like she had that duty that she must stay here because how on earth is her family going to go on and live and be able to communicate again with the outside world without her being there and it is also you know as far as the the, the parents go the the mom the dad how much they pin on her there's even a, a a scene where the dad says she's not a baby she never has been a baby because the, her whole life since she's been able to talk since she was like five years old or whatever that's what she's been she's been their translator so she never really technically got to be the child of the family she's always been this interpreter uh for the family and then um she has this passion to sing but like the family unfortunately can't um it's gonna make me cry you guys because the movie made me cry like a couple scenes okay it's not perfect or anything like that but it's great and i feel like i'm about to give you guys a review i just caught myself but i'm gonna stop you guys i love the movie um and it was just awesome should have just done a review let's continue on the vault and i believe this had like another name to it because I, I swear it does but i don't know we're not gonna we're not gonna worry about that. This is uh, a Netflix movie. Um, we're trying to basically break into this vault. Um, yeah, it's not memorable at all. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say you tried. Was it bad? I don't remember it. I probably should put another tier on here. Non memorable. Maybe instead of you tried, non memorable. I don't know, guys. I really don't remember it too well. Um, yeah they're just really trying to break into this old ass vault somewhere they're doing some stuff yeah it's not memorable we're going to move on um two don't breathe two this is of course the sequel to don't breathe that came out a few years ago that's considered like a horror movie now because of that of course it took me years to actually watch the movie but i kept hearing a lot of positive things and people really kept assuring me that it wasn't a scary movie that movie was great it was awesome you guys like if you haven't seen don't breathe definitely watch it it's not scary like at all um we're just following what the hell's his name i don't know the blind man oh yeah it is <laughs> They're gonna get mad at me for calling him the blind man, but no, he is credited as the blind man, and uh, that's by, uh, portrayed by uh, Stephen Lang, and he does great. Now, mind you, in part one, he's technically the villain, but I don't know, like, can you really put him as the villain? Because these people, these kids, were breaking into his house. Like, he had every right to protect his house. Plus, he's blind. And y'all trying to like break in there and do stuff. I don't remember what they were trying to steal, but they were trying to go in there and do stuff. And he's just pretty much protecting his property. Um, but he beat the shit out of those people, out of those kids. Anywho, over here, a sequel that we like, all the sequels that have been coming out this year, past years, we did not need, we did not ask for, but here it is and it exists. Don't breathe, I would put like an awesome. Don't breathe too, would just be okay, I guess watch don't breathe don't even waste your time with don't breathe too i really wasn't here for it let's move on to netflix's sweet girl that stars uh momoa my man did i give it a pretty positive review i think i did but now that i've had time to really like let it settle it is just an okay movie i'm starting to like notice that august didn't have that many great movies as i'm like stopping here midway anywho sweet girl as i've had time to process the movie now it's uh lingered a little bit more um it's another one that's not one that's gonna stick with me long term it's not one that i really would recommend for you guys to check out i mean if you have nothing else to watch i guess like kind of put it on your to watch list but like keep pushing it down your to watch list it's really not one that you must get to right away let's continue on with another netflix movie beckett 
Um, and it's the star uh, John David Washington. I thought the movie was also just okay. No, it was enjoyable. I, I, I enjoyed it enough. Yeah, it is more than just okay. I enjoyed it enough. Um, so yeah, John David Washington. Uh, we also have Alicia Vikander in it. She does have like a bit of a smaller role. And of course, um, they do promote her to sell tickets or rather get you to watch the movie, right? Because she's really not in it too much. She's really just in the beginning part of the movie. So we're following Beckett, who is played by John David Washington. He's this American who's traveling um, in Greece with his girlfriend, April, who's played by Alicia Vikander. Um, they kind of get into this, well, they get into an accident, a deadly accident. And basically where the car ended up is a location. Well, not really the location. Well, I guess a location. They pretty much ended up seeing something or he ended up seeing something he wasn't supposed to see. And now he's pretty much on the run trying to get to the U.S. Embassy. There's not too much dialogue happening here, which I'm totally okay because he's running. And if he's talking, he's going to be like... <sighs> so you know we don't we don't need this we don't, we don't need that in our life but he does a really really great job in having me like fear for his life like oh my god what's going to happen there's so much more going on it does get a little bit predictable because there's something that kind of happens and i'm like i know it i know it that's kind of why i was on the fence between it being enjoyable and okay because it does have that predictability to it but overall, like I said, I did really did I really did enjoy the movie. Moving on to another, like I said, Netflix uh, anime movie. I really don't do too much anime here. I think this is like the second time I may or third time that I uh, mention an anime movie on my channel. The Witcher: Nightmare of the Wolf. Um, it is, I believe, if I recall correctly, it's kind of like a prequel, but also standalone movie to the live action the witcher series that's on netflix um they did come out with season one last year which was a really really great uh series i really enjoyed it um i thought it was really good i'm not really particularly familiar with anime um uh, movies or shows i do watch a few but i'm not particularly familiar so for somebody who is not particularly there with anime i really thought it was a a, a really great movie just like any anime movie full of blood and guts and everything or following Vesemir who's this really like cocky young witcher all he's trying to do is get the this coin for all the bounties on all these monsters and there's just other things to like the politics behind everything of how these monsters and these demons are kind of coming to um I believe I also heard that this character may or could be in the future for the live action um show went on to a not so good movie it would be netflix's he's on that which is a sequel or a not remake i don't know you guys ginger swapping of she's all that from 1999 which i absolutely adore i love that movie it's great watch that movie don't watch this piece of shit movie here this is just a bad movie you guys it's a bad bad movie they gave a TikToker a movie. Can I get a movie? Honestly, the best actor in the movie was a horse. Beautiful horse, which we have seen more. Moving on to Free Guy, which is in a theaters. It does star uh, Ryan Reynolds. Uh, we are set within a game, a computer-generated game. It's, I think, a great movie for gamers. I, Well, not just gamers, right? But I feel like the gamers are going to appreciate it way more for all the easter eggs that obviously i didn't see but they're there i've heard of said easter eggs do get a really great um a cameo it was really really fun um like i said i do want to well, i don't know if i said it already but i do want to re-watch it because i don't really truly love the movie as a lot of people are but i did enjoy the movie but i would uh like to re-watch it just to see if i can get that love for it i feel like it might be like ready player one which kind of is the same concept as far as you know being in a, a game psycho with td i love him he's the villain here but i just i just love him let me let me try to rephrase that i just i don't love him in the movie i didn't like his character mind you yes i get it he's the villain he's the douchey guy but i just i i wasn't feeling him how he was playing him i don't know if we just need somebody else 
maybe he needed to tone it down i know he was trying to be like the hip cool guy tech guy whatever let's move on to the suicide squad from james gunn now like i said in my review um i did not hate the first suicide squad um i know a lot of people really dislike it they're really not here for it i don't mind it uh but now that we do have this movie i don't really care too much for that movie now like i don't mind if i if i have to watch it i'll watch it whatever i don't care but if it comes between the two i will watch the suicide squad over that one so you guys this is the movie that is my favorite of the year this has bypassed the mitchells versus the machines so far is my number one movie of the year i i just think it's just so much fun it's so much fun it's so bloody it's so violent i love all the characters um i mean harley has been the best harley i think that we've got king shark as you can tell that's the poster that i went with yum yum i love him i need to get a pop from him so i can put him over here next to my harley introduced us to so many other villains like the polka dot man because he has a pretty cool uh, power yes he shoots polka dots great cast loved it john cena does absolutely amazing as the peacemaker don't get attached literally you guys do not get attached to anybody because anybody and everybody could uh, die stay for the end credit though because there is one i don't know if it's still on hbo max it might be coming to an end oh it may have already come to an end we're in september already maybe this is the last week maybe not Maybe it's gone already from HBO Max. And then you just have to go to theaters, which is great. I've seen it in theaters. I've seen it at home. It's great both ways, you guys. I mean, obviously in theaters, because unless you have a great uh, like surround system at your house. But either way it goes, I enjoyed it both times. I've seen this movie like three times already, you guys. I loved it. Moving on to The Protégé, which is another movie that is in theaters. It does star Maggie Q, Michael Keaton, um, Samuel L. Jackson. Now, I did go into this movie like with way, way higher expectations from the trailer, because it looked like it was going to be so good like i was like oh yeah it's like a badass movie we're gonna be so good with assassins it's gonna be awesome um it was a little it did let me down a little bit it did um i do love the chemistry between maggie q and michael keaton samuel jackson designed the movie that often as per usual in a in a movie that incorporates samuel l jackson um i think he probably just signs a check to be in a movie for like 20 30 minutes and he's like that is it that is all give me my millions of dollars i enjoyed it I enjoyed the fight scenes. If you recall from my review, my sister, one of my sister wasn't really totally here for the fight scene. She said it looked really, really choreographed. I didn't really think it did. Um, I probably need to rewatch it to see it, but I don't know. Like, is it as choreographed as John Wick 3? Because I found John Wick 3 to be super choreographed, which is my main issue with that movie, but I still enjoyed it. This was just a good movie. I, I really did enjoy it. Um, lastly, on my list would be Vacation Friends, which is another movie that does star John Cena. And just like in um, The Suicide Squad, he did great in this movie because John Cena, quite frankly, he's very hit or miss more misses than hits in my opinion and then we also have little ray howardly which he was also in a free guy but this is his solo movie he did have a a pretty you know like constant row in free guy um he's kind of like the sidekick there but this is definitely his movie it's, it's a movie that is on on hulu and honestly i went into this not really expecting much especially since I had just seen She's All That and I'm like, oh my god, it's gonna be another terrible movie. But it was actually really, really fun, you guys. I thought it was really fun. So I'm just gonna say it was an okay movie. I know, right? It's just okay. But it's like high okay. It's a high okay end of enjoyable kind of movie. That's why we're gonna put it over here in the front of the okay tier. They pretty much just end up having this very, very wild, scandalous, amazing trip i mean they did a lot you guys like i'm like can i vacation with you guys but well like ron and kyle they're a little bit too wild for me you guys like like a day like i vacation like one day with you guys like well i'm there i see you and then that'll be the end of it is that 13 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 yeah that is 13 that does not look like 13 movies you guys anywho these are the 13 movies that i saw in the month of august this is kind of how i am feeling about them let me kind of take another look make sure i don't need to move anything actually the protege i'm gonna move it down to just enjoyable 
So let me know down below, you guys, what did you see in the month of August? Did we see any of the same things? Do you agree with my rankings? If you don't, that's totally okay. That's your ranking. This is my ranking. Let's not be ugly in the comment section down below. Uh, but yeah, that is it for me today. Of course, don't forget to give this video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Until next time, I'll see you guys at concessions. Bye.